Welcome back. It is being called the sidewalk to nowhere near Stony Brook University. It was partly extended by the state following the death of a student killed by a passing driver on the busy nearby roadway. But it's still well short of what residents and civic leaders say is needed to protect the student population and others. Take a look. As Stony Brook civic leader Jonathan Kornreich walks the sidewalk on Route 25A near the Stony Brook University campus, he's suddenly forced to stop once he reaches the Hawkins Avenue intersection by what he no longer sees, the sidewalk. We have basically a sidewalk that uh, ends halfway where it's really uh, logically where it should lead. Kornreich says that would be into surrounding neighborhoods where many students live off campus. Even in the summer, they can be seen risking their lives navigating the narrow state-owned roadway just to get to campus. All the way down, you have nowhere to walk. You've had three accidents where kids have been injured and one fatality. It's time that the state put in sidewalks. In 2014, engineering student Artem Azen was killed along one stretch without the sidewalk. He was run over by a speeding driver. The State Department of Transportation agreed to extend the sidewalk several hundred feet. The expanded sidewalk extended into the nearby neighborhoods, drawing people into this strip mall just off campus. But to get there, they have to walk within inches of fast-moving traffic. 20-year-old advanced math student Alex Vaz walks a half mile to get from his apartment to campus. He's always looking over his shoulder. It's very dangerous to cross the um, highway over here because the cars are going at such high speeds. Vaz wishes the state would extend the sidewalk, but town officials say the transportation department has already told them forget it. They said that it wasn't feasible at this time, it wasn't a priority, and it could cost as high as $5 million to put a sidewalk for a mile and a quarter. But the supervisor says it's a safety issue and the state should reconsider. And joining us now are Jonathan Cornrice from the Three Village Civic Association and also George Hoffman. He is with the Citizens Advisory Committee for the community and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. So I'd like to get both of your reaction with the state saying it's simply not feasible to spend $5 million to extend that sidewalk. Uh, the, the university, which has grown beyond anything which was initially planned, uh, is, is an institution with a regional and a, a national impact. And I think that asking the, the host community to bear all the costs of, of, uh, of, uh, of hosting the university in our small community is not reasonable. Yeah, because some might say, well, why don't you build the sidewalk, right. George? Yeah, I think right. it's, it's a matter of priorities. I mean, the Stony Brook University is probably the largest university in a state system. Uh, it's only over 35,000 people actually show up every day uh, to that location. There's uh, tremendous amounts of cars and students, the trains. So I think it's really a matter of priorities with the state. So it is state-owned, right, because that's Route 25A, mm -hmm. but all the way down, including the abutment, it's right next to the train station tracks, right? Right, 25A is a New York State, is a New York State road. So that would be a reason to say, okay, you should do it. But, you know, I, t I spoke with one Department of Transportation official who said, look, you know, we own land all over the place, especially in the communities like this, you know, where it's leafy and rural almost with farms nearby. Uh, and if we were asked to pave all of that land so people could be walking along those kind of communities, we'd go broke. Right. Well, it wouldn't make sense for them to, to, to do that much paving. But when you have a site where you are on a daily basis hosting 40,000 plus people to visit that site, I think that some investment in, in infrastructure makes sense and, and, and is reasonable. You know, it's shocking, though, to see how people risk their lives here. Is it just students doing this? or And, and it can probably be very difficult for the drivers, right, George? What do you hear about? Well, yeah, I think all of us that live in the community, all of us have an example where somebody will be driving home at night and some student will pop out from just the sidewalk there and, you know, we're startled. So I think we're just another accident waiting to happen. Yeah, because that's broad daylight, right. you know, and, and you worse. can see people, sort of. But even me standing there with the camera, right. they were blown by me at 50, right. 60 right. miles an hour. Yeah. And that's the other part of this, too, is people yeah. are driving really fast there, aren't they? Well, see, part of the, you know, the Route 25A Citizens Advisory Committee, we are taking a look at that whole corridor. I mean, it's a major east-west access, but yet it runs through, it meanders through these towns along the North Shore, and it's become quite fast. People are just driving way too fast. Well, what about the town? Can it come up with the money some Somehow, or there are other pockets that you could maybe try to dip into for a need like this? Are you exploring that? Well, before I think before we even start looking for money, I think that part of part of 
this 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 sidewalk is a symptom i think of the fact that the that the university has grown so quickly but we haven't had a plan to be out in front of that growth and so before we look for money i think it's important for us to establish a plan for how to develop together yeah people have said that you know stony brook as i said a small leafy almost uh, exactly. rural in many right. ways a victim of its own success because what nobody ever, ever envisioned a campus like this there, no right? when it when it was first being envisioned back in the late 50s and early 60s they saw it as a small teachers college I don't think they ever, in their wildest imagination, would see it becoming the largest university in the state of New York. Yeah, uh, 25,000 students. How mm -hmm. big is the faculty? The about 14,000. Oh, with employees and faculty, about 14,000. That's almost 40,000. Right. Kind of like a small city. Yeah, it is. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and so something needs to be done about that. But it's like, how do you shoehorn that in when right. the rest of the community has already been built out? Well, I think I think that the the, the main thing, and I think that that the citizens' advisory committee was a good start along the way. But I think that having visionary leadership that can help gauge the gauge the, the 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 desire of the community what we're able to what we're able to support what government is going to be able to provide in support of that and developing a plan is going to be the way to move forward oh and this is just one of those kind of issues that folks in uh, the stony brook community are dealing with right i mean because you have twenty five thousand students the campus was never designed to have housing for that right where does it stand right now because we're always doing stories on the, the students being forced into the community and often illegal housing has there been progress on that front? yeah i think the university actually they they started to, you know, understand that there was a lot of problems in the community. They started to build more dorms on campus, so that's been helpful. And they've actually been working with us in a lot of examples of helping us make sure that the students are in safe uh, housing off campus as well. And it's not Animal House. You know, that was the problem right. that we were having. Right. Yeah, there were many stories right. that were done through the years. And, of course, everybody's been young, right, and right. gone to college, but uh, was a little bit out of hand in some of these right. cases. And people who live in that community, they, they don't want to be overwhelmed right. either. They moved into what they thought was this leafy neighborhood. Right. Right. Yeah, so there's always two sides to it. But, you know, I, I also noticed it wasn't just students that were doing this walking along the road. Are, are people coming from like nearby neighborhoods and well, doing this yeah, as well? Just really, just about you know three quarters of a mile down, you have all the museums at Stony Brook. You know, we part of the 25A you know committee was to look at ways to improve you know pedestrian safety, make it easy for bicycles. You know, we'd like to have a walkable and bicycle safe community, and that was part of our recommendations for the citizens' advice. So, how far down do you want this sidewalk to go? Because you know there are other people who say, oh no, you're going to put sidewalks in my community. I mean, would you want taking out trees and foliage? Right. You know, ruin the view. A lot of people. We'll look at things like that that right. way. How far down do you want this well, sidewalk to go? Through through the neighborhoods, I, I understand. I understand that concern, and and we do want to preserve the the rural nature of the community. But along that road, I don't think that um, it's going to really uh, be uh, something that's aesthetically displeasing. So I, I think I, I'd like to see it go all the way down, all the way down. Yeah, to, all the way down. Mean just another mile, like the town. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think it's go less to, than a mile. Yeah, yeah, to Stony Brook and the museums down there. You know, and people still remember that terrible death of the student who yeah. died there. And, you know, if anybody's watching this who drives there, they really need to slow down, don't they? Because yes. oh. even our video, people see our camera and they still come flying right. by. I, I clocked one guy pretty close to 60. Yeah. Yeah. And that road is, what's the speed limit on that road? 30. 30. Yeah, yeah. What is it? 30, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 30. 30, yeah. yeah. And you know you'd be surrounded by thousands of people right. in the community right. there. So what's the next step then for you folks? What will you do next uh, now that the state has given you a big no? Well, we're going to, um, the Citizens Advisory Committee recommendations are going to be adopted by the town next month. And, you know, we hope to take that um, plan and, you know, continue to talk to our state officials and continue to lobby. Have you heard a lot of uh, feedback on this issue, Jonathan? Yeah, this is this is uh, this is one of the few things. A lot of times, it seems like people are often apathetic about civic issues, but this this concept of trying to plan around the growth of the university and to plan what we want our community to look like is something that's really gotten people out and and active. Well, thank you very much for coming in and talking to us about the thank sidewalk you. to nowhere. We'll see if that continues to be the case. Jonathan Cornreich and George Hoffman, thanks for speaking. Thank with you. Us. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back. Thank you.